we're going to go through all of the properties of exponents. So let's go ahead and start with this first one. I've got x cubed times x squared. That power literally means that there are three of them being multiplied, and there are another two of them being multiplied. I can count these up. There are five of them, or we can use the property that says to add those exponents, and we get x to the fifth. So as a property, this one says that a to the n times a to the m, if the bases are the same, you can add up those exponents. So there's our first property. Okay, so example number two. So in example number two, I've got four x's in the numerator, two in the denominator. Now again, I could expand these, but we're going to use a rule instead. If I expand those, I see that I can cancel two of them, but my property shortcuts that. So I've got four in the numerator minus 2. And that gives me x to the 4 minus 2 or x squared. This property says that a to the n divided by a to the m is equal to a to the, I'm going to subtract those powers, n minus m. In this next one, we've got powers. So I've got y cubed to the second power. So literally, there are three y's times itself. And you can see if you count that up, you end up with six of them. Well, my property makes it really nice. I'm going to multiply those powers together and I get y to the sixth. So a to the n all to the mth power is equal to a to the n times m. This next one is really similar. I've got that power two, and I can apply it both to the numerator and to the denominator. So it turns out that I've got x to the fourth, all to the second power, and then y cubed all to the second power. I'm going to multiply those exponents together, and I have x to the eighth over y to the sixth. So this one says that a over b to the nth power is equal to a to the n over b to the n. The next property is really, really similar. So in this next one, if I've got, um, let's do x squared y cubed all to the fourth power, in a multiplication, I can also bring this power through as long as everything's multiplied on the inside. So this becomes x squared to the fourth y cubed to the fourth. I can multiply those powers together. So I'm going to multiply the two and the four and the three and the four, and I end up with x to the two times four or eight, y to the three times four or 12. So we've got a b to the nth power, as long as they're multiplied together, is a to the n b to the n. What if we had a power of zero? So three to the zero power, anything to the zero power except for zero is equal to one. So again, anything to the zero power except for zero is equal to one. In the next one, let's do a negative power. So if I have x to the negative two, I can rewrite that as one over x squared. So this is a reciprocal. I'm going to do 1 over the negative tells me that it belongs in the other spot in my fraction. So this is going to be x squared. Okay, so I'm going to write this property two different ways. So if you've got a to the negative n, this is equal to 1 over a to the n. But this also works if you've got 1 over a to the negative n. The negative sign says it belongs in the other spot in this fraction, and this is equal to a to the n. So two different ways of looking at this property. I'll put a line through those with those negative exponents. For this one, I'm going to use like bases and the properties that we've seen so far to simplify this. Well, 25 happens to be 5 squared. So I can rewrite that 25 as 5 squared, and I get a 2x here. In my denominator, I have 5 to the y. So 5 is my common base. In this numerator, let's multiply these two powers together. My base is 5, so I'm going to leave that. And then I get 2 times 2x, which is 4x 
all divided by five to the y. Now I've got a quotient. I can go ahead and subtract powers. So this turns out to be five to the four x minus y. Let's put some of our properties together. So let's say that we've got three x squared y cubed all to the third power. Everything inside of the parentheses is multiplied, so I can bring that power on the inside, and it's going to look like this. So 3 gets raised to the third power, x squared gets raised to the third power, and y cubed gets raised to the third power. So now we've got this power of a power, and I'm going to end up multiplying those powers together. First, though, I need to do 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 times 3 is 9 times 3, which is 27. So I can simplify that one all the way to 27. Now I'm going to do my power of a power. That's a 2 there. So x to the 2 times 3 is x to the 6th. Let's also multiply these powers. y to the 3 times 3 is y to the 9th. This is a great time to test yourself. Press pause, work this one out, and then come back and see how you did, or you can go ahead and follow along with me. So in this one, I do have a lot of stuff going on in the parentheses here, so I'm going to simplify what I can in those parentheses. I can start out by dividing the 9 by 3, so that's going to give me a 3, and this is really up in my numerator now. I'm simplifying with everything in the denominator. Next, let's move on to the x's. I've got x squared over x to the fourth. That's going to be x to the 2 minus 4. And then finally, my y's. I've got y cubed over y. This is really y to the first. So I'm going to write that as y to the 3 minus 1. And I'm not quite ready to apply that power 2 yet. Let's keep simplifying what we've got inside those parentheses. So I've got a 3. 2 minus 4 is x to the negative 2 y to the 3 minus 1, 3 minus 1 is 2. Let's go ahead and apply that power 2 now. I can bring that power 2 inside because everything here is multiplied. So 3 is going to get squared. The x to the negative 2 and the y squared are all going to get squared. So I get a 3 squared times an x to the negative 2 squared times a y squared squared. Now there's lots of different ways that you can simplify this, but we're all just about to the same answer. 3 squared is 9. I'm going to multiply these powers together. So x to the negative 2 times 2, that's x to the negative 4. And then y to the second times 2, so I'm going to multiply these guys together, that's y to the fourth. Just one more thing that I've got to do, and that's to bring this x to the negative fourth down into the denominator, so I've got a positive power. So I end up then with the 9 stays in the numerator, the y to the 4th stays in the numerator, and the x to the negative 4 is going to come down into the denominator. I'll bet you did great. You're going to get this.